Hey, it just occurred to me, uh, I just finished that uh, Visidun video, and it occurred to me that uh, a hair wing done is tied very similarly. So while I've got the material out, I'll tie it, show you how to tie that one as well. Um, so I'm going to change the hook up a little bit. Um, and this is a, uh, I believe this is a Renee hair pattern. Um, so I've got a down eye hook in this case. Uh, I've got a 100 SPBL size 16. Uh, a regular TMCO 100 will work just fine. And I've changed my thread. Uh, to gray 18 knot 30 denier nano silk, and what I'll do here is I'm going to come in and start that thread and get a thread base all the way back to the bend. And just as a matter of um, making this, uh, show, showing you a different technique here, I'll show you how to use a little ball of dubbing to split that tail instead of. Um, Oh, I lost my tail feather. Let me, let me find it here. Let me see a second ago. There he is. Bear with me. See, I, I got so organized, I started to put it all away. But I've got it. So what I'll do first is I'm going to take a little pinch of that same gluing dollar dubbing, or uh, whatever color bug you want to tie. And it's just a tiny little pinch. You can see I stopped just a little short of the of the hook bend here. And I'm going to put this on over a fairly short length of thread. So kind of a little short section of dubbing. You can see how short that piece is. Um, and I'm going to work back so that I can kind of get this ball around the bend of the hook. And I want to build that little ball and run out just in front of it. So just a tiny little ball of dubbing on there. Um, and again, just for, for sake of showing you a diff different technique, I'll show you how to do a multi-fibered split tail. So we're going to take a, a little clump of that same dun-colored spade hackle, measure it about a shank length long, and I'll tie this in just a little bit in front of that ball. And I want, I want it to be a little on the longer side there. And then as I wrap back over it, it'll start to spread out. What I want to do is sort of separated into two equal bunches on either side of that ball. And you can see as I've done that, I'm just going to wrap back over it to splay that tail out, give you a little better focus on that tail. Try not to catch your hook point. So we've got a splayed multi-fiber tail. Now I'm going to come forward over those butt ends somewhere around midpoint on the hook, and I'll trim those out. So now I'm going to put the, uh, the body on here, and you could use um, all sorts of different materials. Um, I'm just going to do a simple dub body, but you can do it by it. You can do all kinds of different things here. And what I'll do is I'm going to dub this on very thin. Try to get it up pretty close to the hook, and I'm going to start this dubbing just back here at the base of that nub. And build a tapered abdomen. And again, I like to keep it pretty skinny, up to about the 75% point. I'm going to take my thread, run it all the way up to the hook eye, and back again to that front edge. And at this point, I'm going to tie my, my hackle feather in. And I've got a dun colored saddle feather here. And I'm going to tie this in to the bare shank here in front of the body. And then I'll even wrap back over the front edge of that body a bit. And we'll dub the thorax. We're going to put the wing on last. So if you have trouble with wings, uh, this might be one that makes this job a little easier, although we're going to use some hair for the wing, so uh, that creates a whole different set of problems. So another little pinch of dubbing here. And now I'm going to build the thorax. And the thorax is going to be sort of continuing from the front up to that middle diameter and then I'll come back and square that off a bit get that last little bit tightened down but I want to leave about an eye length of bare space behind the hook eye there so now I'm going to take my hackle feather and stand it up on edge 
And I like to wrap this tight when I wrap through dubbing. I like to wrap it tight. And you can see I'm spreading these wraps out. I've only made three turns there. Uh, saddle feathers are very dense, so you don't need near as many turns as you think, especially on a delicate little, little dry fly. And we'll tie that feather off with a couple of turns and trim that stem out. Like so. So we've just got, you know, pretty basic um, kind of dry fly. This is the kind of dry fly I used to tie when I was a kid. Didn't have, uh, didn't have the stuff for wings and didn't know how to do wings. So uh, this is how I did them. So now we're going to take a little bit of hopper deer. And this is, this is dark colored deer hair uh, with fine tips. Uh, compared on deer will work also. But I'm going to take a little pinch of this. It's not going to take much. Uh, keep in mind we're on a size 16 fly and we're not, not making a caddis wing per se, but we're making a, a mayfly wing. So I'm going to clean that out and stack it up. And I like this darker color, um, at least for, for betas, betas and green drakes, um, that matches the, the wing of the natural. So I'm going to take that clump of hair once I've got it stacked up, and I'm going to measure it about a shank length long. So just from my tie end point there behind the hook eye, um, just to the bend of the hook. And what I like to do is, after I get that measurement, try to do this up here where you can see it, is I'll just butt that spot up in my fingers and transfer it to my other hand. Then I'm going to cut it just a little proud of that spot. And I try to get as clean a square edge as I can. So very similar to what I would do on an elk hair caddis. Now I'm going to sweep my hands from the front to the back and put this hair down just behind the hook eye and put two turns on it and then tighten the thread toward me. And you can see those butt ends will flare up nicely. And then just with two or three turns, I'm going to work forward through those butt ends, again, keeping good firm tension on the thread till I can get to the hook eye. And we've got that little flared wing sitting up on top. Pretty crafty. Um, nice little hair wing, buoyant little fly. Um, then I'll come in and, and whip finish there just behind the eye. Trim that thread out. And again, same same move that we did on the um, the Visidon. Um, I'm going to take him out of the vise here so I can get a little better look at him. And I'm going to trim just a little notch across the bottom in the hackle, right flush to the hook, to set this fly a little lower. And depending on how how deep that V is, get him where you can where you can see him here. Depending on how deep that V is, the fly will sit higher or lower on the water. Um, but I definitely like that V shape in the bottom instead of just flush across the flush across the bottom. And that is a hair wing done. Um, pretty cool little fly. Um, this is a, a really nice buoyant fly, kind of the best of both worlds. Um, you could you know, certainly tie this in Adam's colors and kind of have a, a you know, heavier water Adam's. Um, if you've got any hairs that are, these are not really way out of line, but if, you, if they were out of line, I could come in and trim them off. You can see how you can kind of shape that wing a bit. But you can get the nice profile of that tall wing um, with a low floating fly that's, that's fairly quick and easy to tie. Um, so there's a hair wing done. Hope you enjoyed that one as well. I'll see what else I could come up with this afternoon. Thanks for watching. Take care.